Mm-hmm. What do you think of Abbey Road? Uh, I liked uh, the A side. I never liked that sort of <laughs> whatever pop opera on the other side. Yeah, I think it's junk. Hello, hello, it's Lance, and here on the Fab Four Archivist channel, we look at the people, stories, and music that made the Beatles the biggest band in the world. Regardless of what John Lennon thought about it, in this video, we're exploring the history of what's called the Long One, the famous medley on Abbey Road's Side 2. This video is in collaboration with You Can't Unhear This, a YouTube channel that goes way beyond the surface of what you typically hear in your favorite songs. For this project, I'm covering the story of the medley, and You Can't Unhear This is taking a deeper look at the sounds within it. The Beatles' final album, 1969's Abbey Road, has topped the charts in the UK yet again, this time thanks to a new remix and box set. And one highlight of the outtakes included on the set is a rough draft of the medley. The long one takes up almost the entirety of side two of Abbey Road. Rather than a deep look at each song individually, let's examine the medley as a whole. There are some standout moments, but the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. It's officially comprised of eight songs, starting with You Never Give Me Your Money and ending with The End. But you could make the argument that it's nine tracks long, if you count Because as a prelude, or even ten if you consider Her Majesty as an afterword. But the heart of the medley is indeed these eight songs, mostly connected by crossfades and segues. So how did these compositions get linked? Why a medley? The individual songs have their own timelines. Some were ideas from years past, like Polythene Pam. John Lennon said in 1980 that its origin dated to 1963 when he met a girl who was dressed in plastic clothing. Most of the eight songs were rehearsed during the Get Back, Let It Be sessions from 1969. For example, I will sing a lullaby. And the medley is full of fragments of songs, especially Lennon's contributions. Ringo Starr said in Anthology, None of the songs were finished. A lot of work went into it, but they weren't writing together. John and Paul weren't even writing much on their own, really. So what to do with these bits? All four Beatles would have been familiar with most of them, having heard them scattered throughout recording sessions, demos, and jams. Had they been completed, ready for tape songs, they would have been contenders for the Get Back project. After the January 30th rooftop gig, the band only took about three weeks off before starting work on what would become Abbey Road. Tracks like I Want You, She's So Heavy. But the sessions for the medley didn't begin until May 6th, when the basic track for You Never Give Me Your Money was put to tape. Mark Lewison writes that it was certainly recorded with the medley in mind. As such, the song has no proper ending. Lewison also notes the Abbey Road medley must have been born right around this time. While we have a rough idea of the timeline, exactly who created the medley is debated. Paul McCartney was certainly at the helm, and sometimes producer George Martin is credited as well. McCartney handles the question gracefully, saying in Anthology, I think it was my idea to put all the spare bits together, but I'm a bit wary of claiming these things. I'm happy for it to be everyone's idea. Author Ian MacDonald credits Paul solely and wrote that Paul was influenced by these previous works for the medley concept. In 1976, George Martin said, I wanted to try and make Side 2 a continual work. That was Paul and I getting together because Paul really dug what I wanted to do. I was trying to make a symphony out of pop music, bring some form into the thing. John hated that. He liked good old rock and roll. Martin certainly did put his heart into this project, writing and conducting the lush orchestral accompaniment that is highlighted throughout. The recording of Abbey Road took a break after the early May sessions. The band was busy with other things, like John and Yoko's Montreal bed-in. But sessions resumed on July 1st. This gap surely let McCartney and Martin lock in the approach they wanted to take with the medley. Back in the studio, the band's work on the medley would ebb and flow. While we hear things in a set order on the album, the recording sessions intertwined. Oh darling one day, work on the end the next. But on July 30th, a rough mix of the newly recorded medley tracks, nearly in their final order, was made. This is what's heard on the new box set. It has some rough transitions between songs, and it's still missing some overdubs, minor vocal changes, and George Martin's score. 
but it's hard to imagine the band wasn't ecstatic with this first draft. From this point, there were two major changes that would happen to the Abbey Road album before its release. The first was Her Majesty. Originally, the song was in the middle of the side two medley between Mean Mr. Mustard and Polythene Pam. This is common knowledge among diehard fans. But the long one, as presented in the new box set, will be the first time most people hear it. But why did the song get moved to the end of the album? Well, it wasn't even supposed to go there. After the draft mix was compiled, Paul McCartney instructed tape op John Curlander to cut the song completely, and edits were made to create a transition from polythene pan to mustard. But Curlander, aware of the value of any Beatles song, instead affixed Her Majesty to the tail end of the reconfigured medley. This 15, 20 second piece of tape was lying on the floor, and I thought, no, you, you mustn't throw it away. And so I ran off about 15 seconds of Red Leader, and I just put it on the end. And I put the note saying, this song not wanted, but keep after the Red Leader for, for safety. And I sent it off, and the next morning it went to Malcolm Davis, who cut the acetate. When Paul and John and the others heard it the next day, they, they had such a surprise when they heard this thing at the end. As for why the song was cut from the medley, the official word is that the Beatles just liked it that way. John Lennon said at the time, We would like to have a joke at the end, you know, or a surprise, like on the end of, what was, was it Pepper or the Beatles double? It's just one of those things. So this is another one of them, you know. But try this. Give the medley a serious listen with Her Majesty in the middle. It doesn't work nearly as well, in my opinion. Left in this location, the song kills the momentous buildup to the album's end. There's beauty in the plainness of the track, but surrounded by full band and orchestrated tracks, having this song in the middle of the medley feels like going from a rock concert to the library. Removing it was the right call, and the Beatles were rewarded with the happy accident of its eventual placement. The other last minute change was even bigger, at least as it relates to how we listen to the album. Here it is, side one and side two were swapped. Kind of mind blowing, isn't it? Instantly there are questions. The hidden Her Majesty aside, why would the band end side one with the end? Throughout this video, what I've been calling it the side one medley? I've got to be honest with you, I know a decent amount of Beatles trivia, but this bit, well, it flew under my radar until recently. I'm only human, and in this humanity, I'll admit it was really fun learning something brand spanking new about my favorite band and this album. But on paper, we've known this factoid since at least 1988, when Mark Lewison printed it in recording sessions. And he also includes this in his stage presentation on Abbey Road, Hornsey Road. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments. I think the final order was perfect, but hindsight's 2020. Anyone want to make the argument for swapping the two sides? I started this video with a John Lennon quote about Abbey Road from 1971. He commented on it again in 1980. Abbey Road was really unfinished songs all stuck together. Everybody praises the album so much, but none of the songs had anything to do with each other. No thread at all. Only the fact that we stuck them together. John Lennon's disappointment in much of the Beatles' output is well known. Lennon contributed much to the world in his short time here, but I choose to brush off a lot of what he had to say about the band in later years. If you're looking for a rosier outlook, Ringo's memories are much kinder. Contrasting the side two medley with the get back sessions, he said, Out of the ashes of all that madness, that last section is for me one of the finest pieces we put together. And let's not forget George Harrison's contributions to the album. Something and Here Comes the Sun are praised, but he was instrumental in the guitar work and the vocal sound of the long one. About this process, he said, During the album, things got a bit more positive, and although it had some overdubs, we got to play the whole medley. We did actually perform more like musicians again. Lennon may have dismissed the side two medley as ear candy, but it closed out the band's recording career in an unforgettable way. Unlike artists who fizzle out toward the end, Abbey Road feels like it's picking up steam the entire way through, until the ride's over and the final notes of the end fade away. And then you hear a surprise track, Her Majesty, and you remember the Beatles didn't take themselves too seriously. But what about you? Do you think this medley is a masterpiece or do you side with John Lennon who disparaged it by calling it a pop opera? Let me know in the comments. 
If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up button and share it with anyone who loves the Beatles. And now, if you haven't already, check out the companion video on You Can't Unhear This. Thanks for watching.